Okay. So three customer pillars at Amazon. And, and what you said triggered it. So wide selection, low prices, and fast delivery. And he says in one of the letters, he says, we can't imagine a time where customers want less selection, higher prices, and slower delivery. So that focus became very strong, I, is how I would say it. And I also will interject here, one of the potential downsides of that customer obsession focus is the people in the warehouses, the fulfillment centers, had to work really fast. And so th there's some struggle there in terms of how much can you push people to go faster and at the same time keeping this vision for obsessing over customers and getting deliveries there as fast as possible. So that's been a tension for uh, a while. Now I lost my train. I, you might have to ask the question. Uh, we went into birth of uh, Prime, uh, how he yeah. was uh, about the, the warehousing positioning. Yeah. How many times have you experienced going online to buy something and you got all the way to the cart and all of a sudden a line was added for shipping? Well, that was a friction point for customers. And Bezos wanted to figure out a way around that. And so they actually tried at least three different ideas for shipping. First was buy $25 or more and you get free shipping. And it was several days. That wasn't two days at that time. He pitched the idea of Prime, free two-day shipping, regardless of the amount, but based on a subscription fee. His senior leadership team thought he was crazy. Again, a, an example of this can't work. We can't afford it. How are we going to pay for this? Good questions, appropriate questions. Bezos said, though, if it's better for the customer, it will be better for Amazon eventually. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. And that incentive for reducing the cost of shipping, and that's that was a key. So they introduced Prime, free two-day shipping, based on a subscription. People gravitated to it, and then Prime started becoming, adding more things to it to make it more valuable, right? So video and right all kinds of different smaller little pieces that add more value to it. At the same uh, time, he was uh, tying everybody to Amazon. Anything correct. that you would want, you would have to go to Amazon because of Prime. Well, and, and based on studies, and I, I think these are a couple of years, years old now, but based on studies, a Prime member spends on average two and a half times more on Amazon than a non-Prime member. So again, back to oh. that Vision. idea of if, it's e if there's no shipping, it becomes easier. And my wife is, is an example of that. Mine so too. <laughs> it's like, why, should, why go to the store without knowing if they have what you want when I can just order it on Amazon and be here in two days or one day, depending on where you're located, right? And so, again, that friction is taken away from the customer interacting with you. And I think that's a key lesson for any business. Where in your customer interactions is there friction that if you took away, more customers would do more with you? Awesome. To also like uh, add to what you're saying, uh, how we can leverage what he did. Basically, what I took out of that is uh, in every business, it doesn't matter if you're selling something or you're servicing someone, there has to be uh, your top three. Top three uh, places where you can introduce an improvement or something revolutionary that would completely change uh, how your customers are uh, perceiving you, mm -hmm. right? So identifying, like in their case, right, they uh, realized that uh, it was all about uh, shipping, right? Uh, or the second one, they took the variety, and the third, the, they uh, took the uh, the price, right? They the tried price, to make yeah, it... Low uh, price low price and also perceived value, right? So so what can we do in our businesses today to by picking uh, two, three top things and every day work at it, uh, small tests, small decisions, constantly improving uh, to the point where you would basically outdo all your competitors. And by the time they wake up, uh, there's no way to compete, right? If you're just a bookstore, so many people could compete with you, but as soon as they position uh, those uh, uh, warehouses and started to offer that prime too late, right? People try to mimic, like Walmart has their prime 
but yep. it's not uh, it's not the same. Uh, you, no. uh, uh, and, and they continue to struggle tr trying to get traction with it. And, and Walmart, on one hand, has an advantage with all their retail locations, so people could go to the store, pick things up. Even with that, they're still struggling with figuring this out. Yes. Yeah, so by then, when even the big guys cannot figure out how to catch up, they just totally dominate it. And not just being a bookstore or variety of items, they ultimately went into a digital world, right? Yep. So, like, they purchased Audible, they went with the also open the, the hosting, AWS, and all other so services yep. that uh, they, they've been offering went into what do you call those? The uh -huh. right, and now they are going looking at the pharmacy world so yep. like it's just they just dominate <coughs> right uh, i think it's just a matter of time when we'll see amazon banks strategically positioned so well, yes and, and it's it, I, kind of along that line an interesting story early on one of their early inventions i would say is storing your credit card online before that you had to put in that information each time you went shopping and it was now we think about it as oh of course but back then, it was a big deal, setting up an account, having your information stored there securely, and being able to literally one-click shopping. And to me, what's interesting is they actually got a patent on that one-click shopping. Interesting. Yeah, that just, uh, it for uh, 17 years, and I probably three or four years ago, that patent expired, but... They sued Barnes & Noble, who tried to copy that idea, and won. So wow. Apple actually ended up licensing that one-click patent for their website because, again, it was such a new idea and new way for people to have a better experience with online shopping. Yeah. Yeah, now we take pretty much everything for granted and think that it was always there, <laughs> right? So it's yeah. it's not something that was at some point a total novelty. Uh, I remember even the Barnes & Nobles, yeah, when they tried to, they used to be bn.com, then they end up uh, spelling out the whole name and how they were trying to compete. But again, yeah. nobody can keep up. They're just too powerful. There is a first mover advantage and growing fast and reinvesting to, as I said earlier, build that moat uh, around what Amazon does, and it's really hard to overcome that.